through this second semester of Revelation, lesson six, and looking at the seventh seal now. Um, this maybe 106 or 105 or something like that in your book. I think y'all's one off from what I am. Uh, somewhere on okay. uh, slide 106. Yeah. Yeah, it's 104. 104, okay. Uh, it's the page number. Or the slide. Slide number. Uh, it should be page 52. Mm -hmm. Page 52. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, the, remember the, the seal, what we're talking about here, was the scroll that it opens up a little bit to the first seal and these you know, the first six. Uh, seals we've looked, we've looked at kind of uh, where we looked at a lot last semester, but uh, uh, the different seals were each a different judgment. When we get to the seventh seal, the seventh seal actually, when you open it up, it contains seven trumpet judgments. So the first six seals we opened up. Now the seventh seal, the seventh seal has seven parts to it. So the seven trumpet judgments. So if you have so, so, so the seventh seal has seven. Yeah, seven trumpet judgments. Trumpet. Okay. So it's got. Uh, it's like the first seal was one thing, second seal was one thing, third seal one thing, fourth, fifth, yeah. sixth. Then you get to the seventh seal, and it actually has seven parts to it. Okay. So how many seals are there? Seven. Okay. Seven seals in total. Mm -hmm. And what we'll, we'll see this much later on, but in this seventh seal, uh, you have these trumpet judgments. Okay. Later on, we'll see that this trumpet judgment, the last trumpet judgment, actually inside it are seven bold judgments or seven vile judgments. Okay. So uh, these have one part, but this last one has uh, seven parts in it. So those are the seven bold judgments. Yes, seven bold judgments. They are all found inside the seven trumpet judgment uh, section. And I, I, it's, you got it broken down on, on here. I like that. Yeah. 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 I like that. You have vile judgment. Yeah. 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 And so uh, I put vile or bold. Because sometimes we refer to as bold, sometimes we refer to as vile. Okay. Which vile is a bold. We don't use that term much. So. Uh, but nevertheless, you see it's similar to this. So, in this seventh uh, uh, trumpet, you have the seven uh, bowls within that. So, seven trumpet judgment, going back now. Um, and remember, this is really not what angels look like. <laughs> uh, I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. So, basically, this first trumpet announces one thing. Each trumpet announces one thing, but the seventh trumpet here announces seven bold judgments inside that. That's why it gets a little bit complicated for people, because a lot of people think, okay, there's seven uh, 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 seal judgments, and after the seven seal judgments, then there's seven trumpet judgments, and then after that there's seven vile judgments. But that's, it's not 21, because they're count, found within one of the sub, uh, it's a subsection. Another angel came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer, and much incense was given to him, that he might add it to the prayer of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar, and threw it to the earth, and there followed peals of thunder and sounds of flashes of lightning and an earthquake. And seven angels who had seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. So, this incense, when our prayers are like incense before God, and God keeps that. And so these prayers here uh, that are in this, apparently God kept them until he was going to answer them. And the answer comes here in this uh, uh, judgment here. So the first four trumpets we look at. First angel sounded and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they're cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burnt up. Right? And, third, and all the green grass was burnt up. So we had the six seals, goes all the way up to the middle of the tribulation period. Now the seventh uh, seal uh, it begins in the middle of the tribulation period. And the first part of that 
we see that the, the vegetation is uh, burned. Sounding the first trumpet, hail and fire are cast to the earth, mingled with blood, with all the death. So one third of the earth specifically burned are, are the trees and the grass. If that were to happen today, it would be worldwide devastation. I mean, just if you had a one third of the forest uh, was on fire. Uh, how terrible that that would be. And then here you're talking about it, the time period for this is the middle of the tribulation period. So what happens at the middle of the tribulation? Gog and Magog, Gog and Magog begins. The Antichrist proclaimed himself to be God. Earthquake in Jerusalem, 7,000 people are killed. World, the, we, we call... Uh, 1917 World War One and 1941 World War Two, for us, those weren't really world wars compared to what's going to happen. The Gog and Magog War is when the whole world, everybody's going to be involved in this. Everybody. And if everybody's involved in this, and worldwide, look at the devastation that's going to happen on the economies of the world, right? Because they're all financing uh, the uh, the military completely at that time. Uh, they won't be able to farm like they had before. And then you've got one third of the vegetation now burned. And so we're talking about the, the, the crops, we, barley, rice, corn, whatever. And so now famine is going to go into play. You've got God and made God war, and now famine. And so food is going to have to be rationed. Well, you know, we can see. Uh, you know, with the pandemic we are in or coming out of or whatever going on, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, with the vaccine, people say you have to have the vaccine. Uh, whether you want it or don't, don't want it. Uh, there were people, uh, there was a situation where a, guy, a woman needed a heart transplant, had a heart transplant ready. She was on her way to get the heart transplant, and the hospital said, we're not giving it to you because you haven't been vaccinated. And she said, well, I can't be vaccinated. The doctor said, with my heart the way it is right now, that it's not safe. They said, doesn't matter. You have to be vaccinated before you can get a new heart. Which it was crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing uh, with somebody who needed a kidney. They had a family member give them a kidney. They were going to the hospital to get the kidney. And the hospital said, no, because you're not vaccinated, we're not going to let you allow you to have a kidney. Now, you can argue all you like about vaccines, whatever. But that example leads up to what's going to be like in the tribulation period. That you can't buy and sell unless you have this mark. You know, say, well, you, you don't want to take the mark. Well, fine, you don't want to take the mark. You don't have to, but we're not going to need food. And the world here, there's people who are accepting of that today, what's going on today. I'm not accepting Whether If you person wants to uh, take the vaccine, take it. If you don't want to, you're not harming anybody if you don't take it because... If I'm vaccinated and you're not, you're not harming anyone. Anyway. So if anybody's vaccinated should not complain about those who are not vaccinated. The way I look at it. And we can argue over that back and forth, whatever. But the point being is that when government dictates and demands you have to do exactly what we tell you to do or you're not allowed to live. I mean, you can't have a heart. You can't have a kidney. So you've you, you got to do what we tell you to do or you, we'll put you to death. In the tribulation period, that's to be readily accepted. If you don't have the mark, you can't buy and sell. Well, I'm starving. Well, we got a, a crisis here. One third of our uh, uh, vegetation is destroyed, so one third of our crops are destroyed. And so we got to only allow people who do what we tell them to do can have it. You know, Doc, I was just thinking, as a race, we've, that's what we've had to endure. As a race of black people, we've been, been made to tell. We've had to do what? We were told, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we didn't have a sure. choice. Yeah, so, like, maybe for that. you, you know, it may be an option, but with the us as the black race, we didn't have that choice. We we were made to do, and we had to do. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why we have those options now is because people bucked the system and died because of that. So, you know, we look at it. Unfortunately, we kind of look at it a little differently. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well. I, I just think, you know, it, we all should, no, I'm, I'm not talking thinking of grace. It didn't even but I'm just saying being made, when you, you were right. saying being made to yeah. do, or, you know, as a race, we were made to do things we were not allowed to do because of that. And so when you, when you made that statement, 
it made me think about, you know, what, you know, what my ancestors had to go through. Yeah. You know, well, and I, I understand that times that people were forced to do things. I, I get that. Uh, and, but that's what I'm preaching against. Yeah. That people should not be forced to do what, whatever. I mean, people should not be forced to do slaves, be slaves. Uh, people should not be forced to do things that are contrary to their beliefs. You know, uh, um, Jehovah's Witnesses won't take uh, blood. I, I don't understand that. But should we force them to do that? Well, if we do, then any right that we have as a Christian, if we want to take communion, the government says, no, you can't take communion anymore. Should we then stop? You know, that's, so it gets into that. I'm, I'm saying that people should be free to make those choices. But what I'm talking about now, I mean, this goes far beyond slavery in the tribulation period. I mean, this goes to where, you know, you... Uh, you have to do exactly what we tell you to do. Kind of like what Putin is doing in Russia right now. Forcing the people. I don't think it goes past slavery. Mm -hmm. I don't think it goes past slavery because that was a, you know, that was a rough time. Well, it, it, did, it was a rough time. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I'm saying is it goes to uh, instant death. Yeah, but that was some of it. Well, it was some of that, in, yeah. but not always. Yeah. In, in, uh, not every slave that died of, you know. Uh, but in the tribulation period, if you don't do it, you, you die immediately. Uh, they, uh, you, uh, remember, the first half of the tribulation period, there's 144,000 that are out there witnessing to the world. And at the middle of the tribulation period, we're told that untold millions are in heaven. That's a throne that have been martyred. So in the first three and a half years, there's going to be millions of people who get saved who are put to death in the first three and a half years. That's before, before things get bad. I mean, imagine that. that that's the, the good times when millions are killed for their faith. Now, in the middle, to the end, those for their faith, boom, die immediately. You don't get food. Uh, your family members are going to tell on you. So it's going to be getting really, really bad. And, and the world has never seen anything like that. What, what's going to be? They, they have not. I'm just glad I won't be there. Yeah, me too. I mean, it, it, it is, it's going to be horrible. Uh, but you know, through, through this all, we got to keep in mind that it's a reason for all of this. Absolutely. We don't know the reason yet, but God knows. Oh, yeah. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, what's going on today? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is not the first pandemic it's ever been. And if, if God, if Jesus didn't come back soon, it's not going to be the last one. Uh, whatever cause of this, I don't think it's a, a plot against the communist effort against the world, you know, like some people act like, or uh, that uh, uh, they're trying to wipe out half the side. I don't believe that. that I believe it was an accident that happened. Uh, and probably a very honest mistake that, that took place that has devastated the world. Uh, same thing happened with the flu pandemic in 1918. Uh, nobody wanted that to happen. Uh, the bubonic plague, nobody wanted that to happen. You know? uh, but our society deals with it in whatever way that they can. And I think because we're so, our nations have become more and more further away from God, it's much tougher to deal with stuff. Because people are looking for a secular answer That's rather than looking to God for an answer. And they're looking to government to give them the answer, and the government doesn't have the answer. I mean, they don't even know the right questions. So how do we get us the answer? Uh, but Hale uh, talks about here at this judgment, uh, trumpet judgment, uh, comes from above, uh, fire, blood. Of course, restricted to death when you have all these people. You know, one third of the vegetation is burning. How many people die in those fires? You know, so it's, it's devastating. Second trumpet. When we read the Bible, we need to read the words. Right? I know that sounds obvious. But that's true. But sometimes we don't read the words. We skip over them real quick or we think we know what something says. And so we read it, and it says, the second angel sounded that word, great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea. So the Bible says a great mountain is cast into the sea, right? Is that what it says? Actually, it says, as it were, a great mountain. So something like a great mountain, it doesn't say it's a great mountain, but something like a great mountain is burning and cast into the sea. Could this be 
a meteorite? Well, meteorite's huge. That's like a mountain. So maybe it's a meteorite. I don't know what it is. All I know is something that appears like a great mountain. It says, uh, burning with fire, it has seen. So it's something like that. The object cast seed compares to a great burning mountain. It's a huge mountain-like ball of fire, which cast seed. Maybe an asteroid or uh, a meteor. Or com we don't know what it is. Uh, it, it's something that God will send. And so whatever it is, people think you know, it's like a huge, it looks like a huge mountain. Right? Remember, this is what's in our English grammar was called similes. Uh, simile is like it says that the Holy Spirit was a dove. Did it say that? No. But he came like, like, like a dove. Like a dove. So like a dove would, would flutter down. That's how what the Holy Spirit did. I don't know what that means when it comes down to it. You know, the Holy Spirit is a spirit, so he's not a visible being. Uh, but, you know, the, the wind, I, I don't know what, what it is. But it's a simile. And so the same thing here is a simile. So whatever it might be, maybe an asteroid, whatever it might be, it's not... Uh, you, some people might argue that this is a volcano. Uh, a great mountain burning with fire? Well, what's a uh, volcano? It's a great mountain burning with fire. Only this doesn't say it's a volcano. Uh, it says it's a great mountain burning with fire, cast in sea. Uh, and the third part of the sea became blood. So now you have the salt water. Uh, the word sea here refers to all ocean, salt water, what have you, uh, that are destroyed. Uh, that's another source of food. I mean, with all the, the sea fish, seafood now, uh, one third of it gone, then that reduces the food supply greatly. And then the third trumpet, and there's a great star from heaven burning, as it were, a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers. So we've had the salt water one third destroyed. Now the fresh water. The name of the star is called Wormwood. Uh, I don't know, again, is it some type of asteroid? Yeah, it could be. Uh, is it an actual star? It could be. Uh, uh, our scientists today say that the, uh, the smallest star in our solar system is what? The sun. Yeah. It's the smallest? Yeah, it's just the nearest by far. Uh, the rest of them are so far away, you know, that, but maybe that's true. I don't know. I don't know. You know the way they measure things is just not 100%. Uh, they're guessing. Uh, I, when I was in science class, we did that by measuring uh, uh, objects at a distance, and you do that by uh, measuring from one place, and then you go 50 foot down, measure from another place, and you get the right angle, and you do the math, and you supposedly can tell how big something is. And you can get close, uh, but now when we're talking uh, uh, thousands and thousands of miles away, you can, you can get close as you want, but you're not going to get really right. Because if you're off one thousandth of a millimeter, it might be the difference between something that's uh, uh, five miles wide or a hundred miles wide. You know, it's a, we, we just, they, they're guessing. They, they act like they know. They state it like they know exactly what they're talking about, but they don't. Uh, but if, there, uh, if this is a star, then obviously it's smaller than the sun. Okay? Because the sun could fall on the earth. The earth would be totally burnt up before the sun even got close enough to it. So whatever it might be. Maybe it's an asteroid. Again, we, we don't know exactly. Uh, remember Wormwood, the uh, children of Israel, when, after they crossed the Red Sea, they got to the waters at Mara. Uh, and that word Mara is wormwood, it bitter, means bitterness. For whatever reason, the star affects the fresh water. It makes the water bitter. Now, there is a wormwood in Israel today. That It's a type of plant, whatever. It's not really poisonous, but this is different. It's, not, it's called wormwood, but it actually poisons the water, the Bible tells us. It's not just that they're bitter, it's that they become poisonous. So it comes down to the fact that one third of the fresh water. And of course when that happens, uh, I mean, you talk about buying and selling water. I mean, you know, this, what's going on in the Ukraine, uh, look at gas prices. 
And the main thing, we get 3% of our guests. So last week I thought, told you know, that I didn't think we got any. We actually get uh, right about 3% of our oil from Russia. Well, I heard, I heard 10%. I it's, heard so many different It's, it's three is what I, I read, I okay. looked up, and then I heard on the news too. But, yeah. uh, how, you know, whatever it is. But it's not a lot. It's, it's not enough to where if they cut it off today, right. uh, there will be no problem. Exactly right. and they, no problem and that, they say that will hurt him more than anything. They, they should have cut already cut it off. I, I, I don't, don't, know why I don't understand politics. It. I don't get that. Oh. Uh, I mean, whether you're for Biden or against Biden, he can make an executive order today and demand that it will be shut off and it will be shut off. Uh -huh. uh, exactly, it doesn't take Congress, it doesn't take Senate, it doesn't take whatever. He can just say no more oil and it would stop. And that would hurt Russia yeah, somewhat. Yeah. Uh, but we don't need it. We're, yet, we're getting 3% of our oil from there, but we're actually shipping oil out of this country at the same time. I, I don't get it. We ship oil to Canada all the time. Uh, we, we have enough. But again, it's all politics. But look what gas prices just because of the threat. Right? Because you know, gas prices went up as soon as the war supposedly began. Well, the gas pumps were already filled with gas here. Why did they go up price? Well, because people's always out to make a buck. Mm -hmm. The gas stations paid uh, one price for their gas. Now they can sell it to, uh, for a dollar more because the news is afraid of what might happen. It's all speculation. It's not even facts. So in the tribulation period, when man is so wicked and far away from God, when the Holy Spirit doesn't restrain evil, uh, uh, things like this happen. Gas prices, where are they going to go? Water. Now one third of water. What, what's the cost of water? You know, right now, people, our country, is, we are such a spoiled nation. Because people are, have, are, have been paying more for a gallon of water in the last 30 years than they have for gas. Mm -hmm. you, you buy a bottle of water, it's a dollar. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not even a quarter of a gallon. So, you know, four of them is less than a gallon of gas. Mm -hmm. And people buy it because we're spoiled. People get Starbucks and pay five dollars for a cup of coffee that Starbucks pays sixty cents to make at the most, maybe not even that, uh, and they're raising their prices again because they want to pay their people more. Well, pay the people more that means cost us more. So we, inflation, it's it's a mess. I mean, it's just a, that's that's politics. That's what it is. It's all politics. So in the tribulation period, these things going on, the cost of everything is going great, sky high. The world war is going on. God may not have war, so it's getting far worse. Uh, four things were sounded, third of the sun, third of the moon, third of the stars were smitten. So with these uh, events taking place in the atmosphere, uh, what's the weather going to be like? Cold. Yeah, one third of the sun, it's going to cool things down. Yeah. Uh, therefore, uh, heat noise is going to go up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, because the people are living... Uh, same type of lifestyle as we are, so yeah, oil's going to go up. Uh, people are going to freeze to death. Uh, one third of stars, one third of the moon. Uh, with the moon, uh, it controls the uh, tides, the gravitational pull of the earth. So that's going to affect the, the oceans. So who knew, you know, you already got one third of the oceans uh, destroyed by the uh, uh, trumpet judgment. In contrast to the first three judgments against the land, sea, and rivers, and the fountains of the water, the fourth trumpet now <coughs> is against the heavens. So these first four trumpets, just worldwide major devastation. Uh, no matter where you're at in the world, you're going to suffer. Uh, those who might escape quote, the war, you know, who don't want to participate and flee to some place so they don't have to participate, they're not going to escape these. These devastations will take place as well. So it's going to be very, very bad for them. There it sounds well. And I beheld and heard an angel fly through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of three angels which are yet to sound. And so in the fifth trumpet and fifth and sixth trumpet are kind the first two of the woe, woe, woes. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven, uh, which had fallen to the earth. 
it, this star here probably is referring to uh, an angel. Right? Uh, there are some passages that refer to angels as, in this manner. And we know this is a being rather than just a star because uh, the key to Balaam's pit was given to him. Yeah. And he opened the Balaam's pit and smoke went up out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit. And out of the smoke came forth locusts upon the earth. And power was given them as the scorpions of the earth had power. And they were told that they should not hurt the grass, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So these are locusts. Okay, it, doesn't say, uh, it actually says they are locusts. Um, uh, where's that here? Sorry. Uh, yeah, out of smoke came locusts. So these are actually locusts. Not, not like locusts, but these are actually locusts. But they're different than locusts than what we think of today. Uh, but their natural inclination with real locusts is to hurt the vegetation. Well, these are told don't hurt the vegetation. Because these are different in that they had uh, uh, stingers like a scorpion. So they're not out for the vegetation, they're out for mankind. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. And they'll long to die, and death flees from them. So for a while, these things will want to persecute mankind, and people will want to die and can't. So God allows them at this point. All right, let's take a break. Yeah, we won't be here. Right. <laughs>